All right, so let's just do a quick video creating a shape like this. Someone was working on something similar and running into issues with this. So basically create a plane and merge it center on one side, adjust your uh, triangular shape however you want. Now, what they wanted to do was just more or less bevel these corners, right? So control B and V, you can do a vertex bevel. I'm gonna reset my profile shape here to 0.5 real quick. And uh, we ran into this issue in another video. I talked about it, like sometimes, like this could work, like they're pretty evenly spaced right now, but certain types of triangles, you can see when we bevel those vertices, it doesn't look quite the same, right? So uh, you might want to do the vertices kind of in little sections, right? So you do like this one and then you can change the profiles um, and do something like that, perhaps. And we bevel this vertex over here. It looks wrong now, so we'll reset it. Uh, we can also change the profile of that one. Uh, if needed and if you need little circles that help you to do this you know use little circles basically so you can make sure that you're getting kind of the um, the right setup here anyways right so with that out of the way though all we got to do is inset this inset again and hold control and push that up and we'll get kind of that similar kind of corner there that one was a little bit sharper i think than the one we have going on here but the same idea still applies we can alt click here press ez we can grab these, S, Shift, Z, whoop, inset, hold control. Also, you can do that, and then you'll have an extra edge. You can just control exit. All right. And so this is where the problems arise, because when you bevel, you need a bevel with certain segment counts. You can see here, like, we should have a center one, right? That's good. That's what we're looking for. So when we inset, it starts doing this number. And you'll see here, my solution was to create um, these two kind of like... Um, Tri quads, if you would. Uh, sometimes you can get away with not doing it exactly like that. You might get away with like a um, a join here, perhaps. Or you might be able to join here even. But you can see where this is going to go. Like knife cut, hold shift, boom. You can get a similar esque type result here. So you got a couple, couple reductions going on, or it's going to reduce kind of here and reduce here, uh, which works out pretty well. If I use symmetrize with mesh machine, you can just symmetrize it real quick. Uh, so we'll just have to come up here and do the top one still, right? And then you can see where that's going to go. Dissolve this edge. There you go. It's pretty much matching now, which is great. And um, what about the middle? That's the real question here. So the middle, let's dissolve it real quick. Um, we might get away with poking face. It might not get the exact center. But a lot of times if you poke the face, it'll create a vertex at the middle and connect it all up. Um, usually this is pretty good, but we want to press K. Hold Shift and connect to the center lines here would probably be the better bet you can see it does look a little bit off um, but we could try to run with that maybe if we want to do that and then eventually we do the same things uh, down here which if we symmetrize we'll get that edge back and we'll get the other side so uh, all in all you can see we're having it reduce like so coming from these corners out uh, we got this center one here, which, you know, we could try to dissolve maybe. Or we can keep it. We got quads. All right. So if we loop cut, we get these kinds of loop cuts. So it's not the end of the world to do that. But that does give us the pole at the center. Which maybe, you know, you can see over here, this one's a little bit cleaner looking. It doesn't have the E-pole. It has an N-pole instead. So it's a little bit of a topology this this difference here because of the way we've done this. And notice we have this edge pulled down like this, um, holding edges, guys. Usually this end pole, you want to back it up like this, right? And you could use profiles of one if you want it sharper. And then that's going to push that end pole just off the edge so you get this result. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky on this one. We end up with the uh, the crazy topo here. So similar-esque result. I think this one's cleaner. Uh, but that comes down to the segment counts, guys. Sometimes, you know, you can't always get what you want. Let's see if we can clean it up differently, though. Let's see if we can make this better. Let's just uh, Alt-Shift-Click through here a couple times. Control-Exit. Let's just get rid of these just for a moment. I'm going to grab this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex. If we hit J, it creates a big triangle. Control X that. This will um, poke a lot nicer, basically. So I'm just going to run these out with KC. 
Um, oh, yeah, you could do that, too. You could do KC and hold Shift. You see how it does that? Kind of interesting, huh? KC. Now you do that. Then you do that. There you go. So either one of those would have worked, but the in, I think the end pole in the middle is nicer, personally. So now when you do loop cuts, it does kind of a similar thing. But it redirects in all these different manners now. But the topology is a little bit more uniform and nice and doesn't have that crazy stretch and e-pole in the middle. So it's a very similar result here now. Um, ultimately, you know, if this corner was a different count, I think we would have a better time with it. If it was something more like this. So you can see, but we'd have to correct that curve now because we done messed the curve up basically, right? So from the start, that's something you would want to fix at the start, not later on perhaps. You can see as I'm symmetrizing things, things are getting kind of squirrely uh, as well. Like that tends to happen, but uh, you know, you can always reduce until you're ready to add those in later. We'll keep that one and then we'll get rid of these ones. A little sketchy, right? <laughs> it's a little, a little tricky uh, to do that. There. I think we got back to where we need to be for the most part, other than this edge up here. There you go. So yeah, we definitely got to correct those though. This is all that. So there you have it. That's um, the same process basically. When you start playing around with the uh, subdivision, this is going to kind of hurt you a little bit. Just remember, it's about subdividing the triangle, guys. That's all it is. If you have a triangle, poke that face. This is what you get. This isn't what you want, though. You want that instead. You want to reverse that triangulation, basically. So you end up with these triquads like this. Sometimes you got to grab the faces and control X them. And then you get that. So that would work out. Basically, that's what we're doing up here. So very... Very simple idea. Tweak that a little bit. So we're a little bit closer matching at least. You see that one doesn't quite match like that. Oops, turn that off a sec. So you can see it starts to round out a little easier. But fundamentally it's a little I think it's a little bit different. I'll flip all of it. Select all that. Press E, S. You see. Similar esque result, but not the same exactly. These corners don't quite corner the way we'd want. Not to say you can't, you know, shift things around and make them behave more appropriately, but it'd be a little bit problematic. That's boundary selection. I've talked about that on the channel a lot. Basically, select loops in edit mode. Select loops, uh, boundary loops. Just use shortcuts for it. I set up shortcuts. So you can just uh, grab a face strip, select boundary loops, boom. Now you got that. So select loop in a region. Similar ideas. And you can do this all day long, guys. Very very kind of simple stuff Whoop, up here it didn't work out though probably some doubles or something up here i imagine uh, get rid of this edge maybe it's, yeah some doubles in here for some reason just bump up the merge distance a little boom there you go you got it um yeah so not quite what you would want maybe a little bit better maybe a little bit better now the reason this happens is because simply there's more geo here to control this curvature Whereas over here, there's not as much. Uh, so the only way we can control it is by shifting these edges around quite dramatically. So you turn on in edit mode and turn it on in result or on cage, as it says. We might be able to work these out, but we have to be a little bit more particular with what we're doing. And sometimes that's easier said than done. Because like this whole edge needs to be done a certain way where it like goes up and down on this edge. 
And guess what's going to happen? Blender doesn't have a tool for that, right? It doesn't. Um, the closest you can get is if it's a planner section, you can use the shear tool, which is control shift S by the way. Um, but you see, it doesn't line up. You have to line up to an active element using its normal and you have to pick the active element. That's the closest you're going to get to this behavior where you can start to shear that now in that direction, um, which is kind of, um, that's, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it only works on flat stuff anyways. So global median, not the best option there for you. Machine tools add on, you have a feature, which is alt R, which is rotate on edge, which works really well. Although it does shift it quite uh, a little bit as well, which, so it's not as constrained as I would like it to be, but it, it, it's not terrible either. You can see if it was more worked out from the start, we would have had a better, um, a better result possibly, but yeah. Alt R is definitely useful. And then you can GG twice, GG twice, Alt R now. You see? Sometimes to the extremes it goes crazy, but there's other um other methods for that as well. So you can see there's like different when you mouse wheel through it different ways of doing that. So the SX version of machine tools, awesome because you get that feature basically. One of the uh, best things in Blender. It's like standard in Max and Maya, but it's not in Blender for whatever reason. There you go. So if you ever need to do things like that, there you have it. Works in perspective as well. It's a little goofy over here, though. Planner view, it's going to work better. See? And there we go. This can be loop cut it a couple times. We got a lot of edges in here. I don't think we need. Do that subdivision up and so yep there you have it guys we have three different ways about ways of going about doing this i guess because he was dealing with it perhaps yeah some topology is going to be better than others perhaps but this is the same thing still ultimately right like a loop cut at the bottom so maybe we get rid of this one this one this one hope oh, we created a spiral my bad okay there we go yeah so the spiral is going to be created because on this side we got to get rid of that okay see it goes across it now it does this one didn't go across so blender doesn't like these kind of cuts sometimes that's okay yeah much cleaner now right anyways that's it for this one i'll check you out the next one